think we can start. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, so I'd like to talk about secure and reliable way of distributing audit trial files. I would like to talk about audit, audit this D daemon I was working rec uh, on recently. Uh, I'm Pavel Jakub Davidek. Uh, I work for uh, stuff for FreeBSD for quite a few years now. Uh, but before I get to audit this D, I would like to uh, talk a bit about uh, the audit system itself. So what it does basically uh, is that audit subsystem is responsible for uh, logging security relevant events. So all the all the stuff that it's somehow uh, relevant from the security point of view should be logged by. Uh, there should be a way to log it with uh, audit framework. But what you have, uh, what you need to know is that audit itself doesn't protect you in any way. Uh, it can log security relevant events, but it doesn't take any actions uh, if something bad happens. Uh, so what alternatives do we have or had uh, before the audit framework was committed? Audit framework was part of the Trusted BSD uh, project. Uh, and uh, before it was committed, uh, we could use some alternatives to uh, to try to log some of the events. So we had uh, stuff like uh, Ktrace. It can track all the system calls, signal handling, uh, and stuff like that. So we could imagine using it for logging uh, system calls done by various process. Now we have Dtrace. Uh, so Dtrace, of course, also has syscall provider, which can be used to to log all the system calls used by uh, interesting demos or user processes. Uh, we also have functionality which is called accounting, uh, which logs basic execution, uh, only execution. So uh, if someone executes some command, it will be logged to uh, using accounting, uh, accounting framework. Uh, and of course, we have this log, but for, uh, uh, from security perspective, it's pretty useless. So. Okay, let's back to, get back to audit. Uh, so, what audit can do is to uh, provide really detailed log about the uh, activity of users, demons, and other processes. Uh, for example, uh, this, this is basically lists what kind of information you can find uh, in audit re record, uh, this one is uh, related to uh, exec VE uh, system call. So you can you have exact time when someone executed a command. You can you have you have full path to this command. You have all the arguments uh, for the command. Uh, you have some information about the executable, like mode, owner ID, owner GID, uh, the other uh, file system. Uh, informations and you have also information information about the subject. Subject is uh, uh, is a user doing the uh, performing the action. Uh, so we have uh, effective UID, effective GID, also re real UID, real GID. Uh, but interesting uh, entry here is audit UID. Uh, Audit UID is there to track original user that performs given action. So for example, if user logs in as PJD, for example, and then I uh, switch to root account, uh, and maybe to some other user, and maybe then root account as, uh, again, Audit UID will point at PJD uh, for every single system call that will be run. So no matter how many times I change credential, uh, Audit UID will point at my original credentials, which were used to, to change credentials later. So audit also have really low uh, overhead, uh, because of course, the amount of events that uh, are generated by the system is really huge. 
so the overhead could be significant. Uh, so one of the priorities was to make the audit works with really small overhead. Uh, it has to be reliable. Uh, means that uh, when something happens, that's 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 a requirement. If some event uh, happens in the system, for example, someone execute a command or open a file, it has to be locked. This is. Uh, this is different from the other uh, alternatives I show you uh, because uh, we have really guarantee that if the event happened, it will be locked. Uh, this is very important. So no, no record can be, can be lost. Uh, actually, some records can be lost, but you can predict how many because you can uh, figure how deep the audit view uh, is uh, because, of course, we don't want to... Uh, uh, write to the disk every single event and f-sync because this would just uh, destroy performance. Uh, but we can decide how many logs we are uh, we can uh, lose, and uh, this is pretty important uh, because we can this way we can configure uh, how often we want to sync the data to disks uh, because of course if someone breaks in, it can crash our system and we lose some of the logs, but maybe not uh, not enough logs to actually be able to track it down, to, to see what, what actually happened. Uh, so audit has to be also configurable, uh, which means that we can uh, really decide on our own how much uh, detailed information we want to log. So for example, we don't want to log all the read system calls. We don't really care that someone is reading which parts of the file, although we do want to log, for example, which files, uh, which files uh, he opens for reading, for example, writing. We don't want to log uh, every single fstat system call that someone is just asking uh, about attributes of a file. But we do want to uh, log when someone changes permission or ownership of, of a given file. Uh, so it also has trustworthy which means uh, that if the logs are there, uh, we, can, we should know uh, that there are no change somehow. Uh, for example, with, uh, with syslog, uh, users can generate, uh, generate logs. Uh, and this might or might not be used to actually uh, somehow uh, trick administrator into thinking that something did happen or did not happen. Uh, in audit, every single log is uh, either uh, sent by, uh, every, every events are sent uh, to the kernel. And also events can be generated by the kernel. So we can trust all the events are actually uh, real events. They really happen. Uh, so in case of audit, uh, we have all those properties uh, that we can rely on. Uh, we have only security relevant, uh, relevant events. Uh, we have detailed information about those events. Uh, it's lower, it's reliable, uh, we predict the loss, we can find, grind, uh, configure it, uh, and it is trustworthy. All those other al alternatives don't really meet those requirements. For example, Ktrace can lose some of the, uh, uh, some of the, uh, some of the events. You, you don't have guarantees that those events will be locked. Uh, some don't have uh, enough detailed information like accounting. Uh, you can only uh, log executions. Uh, some are not really low overhead like D-Trace. Uh, D-Trace is advertised as very low overhead, but when compared to audit, for this single task, um, audit is uh, smaller overhead. Uh, so some of uh, those are not reliable. You cannot predict how many records you can lose in case of a crash. You cannot configure them maybe as good as, uh, as audit. And of course, you cannot trust um, what they generate. Uh, OK, some special effects from Keynote. OK, usefulness. Uh, so 
what can we use, uh, how can we use audit uh, generated records? So of course the first and most important thing we can use audit for is for post-motor analysis. So someone breaks in, we can actually track down what he was attempting to do and what he actually does. Because most of the time if someone breaks in, we just clear the system and reinstall the entire thing. And actually if audit probably we should do the same. Uh, but we can actually see uh, what was what was the original problem? We can find uh, which door let the attacker in. So we know, for example, if this was a bug in Apache, if this was bug in SSHD, or uh, some other uh, some other uh, bug. Uh, another interesting use is uh, for intrusion detection because Audit Daemon uh, provides. Uh, audit pipe, uh, which is just device in slash dev uh, directory, uh, and you can, uh, you can attach to this, this device and uh, uh, get all the audit events uh, from the kernel. Uh, so you can imagine uh, uh, intrusion detection systems, the uh, system that can use those logs uh, to monitor some, uh, uh, some unexpected activity. Okay, uh, the entire configuration for audit is in TC security directory. You have a few files there where you can uh, decide what uh, what information you want to log, how how detailed the log should be. Uh, the audit record format is very simple. It comes from Solaris original BSM format. Uh, you have header, which contains uh, the entire uh, record uh, length. Uh, you have various tokens. Uh, you have subject, which most of the time is just uh, uh, user credential that were used to perform the uh, action. And you have return value, so you can see if the uh, given action succeeded or not, because audit also uh, logs all the events that were uh, that failed, basically. Tokens uh, depends on, on event that happened. For example, for exec VE, you can see uh, command was executed with uh, with what arguments. For open, you can see what file was open. Uh, if you were looking closely, you could notice that there are, there is a question mark in, with in trustworthy on this slide as well. So. Uh, why, why, is, uh, um, why audit is not really trustworthy, why I don't think it, it is. Uh, because the, uh, the biggest problem with audit, and this is the reason I, uh, why I started to work on audit this D, was when you uh, break into the system and you have root, root privileges, uh, you can simply uh, erase entire uh, for audit directory. So you can just erase uh, all tracks of your activity, or even worse, you can actually replace the logs. So uh, you can, uh, for example, uh, trick administrator into thinking that actually nothing, uh, nothing bad happened. Uh, the answer for this is Audit this D. Uh, the project was sponsored by the FreeBSD Foundation, uh, and basic goal is to uh, distribute audit trial files to another machine, which seems very easy. But uh, it's not actually. You have to do it uh, in a very secure manner. We don't want uh, audit this D to be actually uh, hopped to another machine. We don't the protocol audit this D uses to actually be able to break into our log machine and erase the logs from there. Uh, it has to be reliable, but we, don't, we really want the logs to be distributed. We don't want to lose any logs, and, uh, or we don't want any corruptions uh, on the way. Uh, and also, this was not really a requirement, but for me it was very important uh, to uh, ensure low latency. So because, uh, once the attacker breaks in, it can erase the logs anyway. It can stop stop the audit this the demon or start to send something else. But before he does that, we want to send as many logs as we can. So we can actually happen. 
Uh, of course, another problem was uh, that some of the projects in FreeBS are cursed. For example, like uh, our system installer, which was there for many years, uh, and nobody couldn't actually replace it. But there were many attempts, but finally we have new installer. Uh, we also had one file system, uh, and for many years there were many ports uh, from of other file systems from Linux, for example. But uh, we couldn't break this curse and. It was similar with, uh, with uh, audit distribution daemon. I know about three attempts to implement the daemon, but the course didn't let the people to actually finish the work. Uh, so the course is finally broken. OK, so uh, how did this, how did this D actually works? So we have two roles. Uh, it can act as a sender or as a receiver, uh, which, can, uh, which it means it either sends the logs or the trial files or receives them and stores them locally. Uh, I wanted Audit DSD to be as, uh, as independent as, as, uh, as it is possible uh, from other demos like Audit D. Because um, in case of Audit D, it creates, uh, uh, it creates trial file. Uh, which is suffixed with not terminated uh, uh, words. Uh, and audit D passes the, uh, the file handle to, to the kernel. Kernel does the, all the writing. Uh, so I had to extend audit D to actually create a link uh, in this directory. Uh, this allows us to be dependent from audit D because if we decide that we want to garbage collect uh, trial files from var audit directory, uh, we want to be sure that we don't, we don't delete the files before they are distributed. Uh, and I think Hardlink really allows uh, to do that because uh, audit D will manage uh, his own link and audit this D will, will manage uh, uh, the link in this directory. So. If audit this D distributes the file uh, uh, successfully, it just removes its own link. Uh, and audit D still has uh, the file uh, locally. Mm. Also, audit D has to rename the file because once the file, uh, because if we configure that the file has to be terminated at a given size, if the size is reached, we want to rename the file and start another uh, so Audit D has to rename the file uh, in this directory as well. Audit this D uh, just uh, will remove the file uh, when it's done distributing the file. OK, this is how uh, Audit this D w uh, looks like inside. Uh, so we have this uh, parent process. Uh, it's blue. Uh, and we have all the. Uh, children processes. So in case of sender, uh, which sends trial files, uh, we actually, uh, every single connection have two children. Uh, those red uh, boxes are actually uh, sandboxed processes. So we separated uh, TLS uh, because, of course, we want this uh, whole traffic secure. Uh, and we use uh, TLS to encrypt uh, the traffic. Uh, but because. Uh, OpenSSL uh, has uh, bugs from time to time. Uh, we want to sandbox the entire TLS logic. So all the encryptions happen separate process. So uh, if there is a bug in TLS uh, itself, uh, the attacker shouldn't be able to erase uh, the files that were already distributed. Uh, sender itself is also sandboxed separately. And in case of receiver, uh, we can have uh, we can receive from many, many other machines uh, to, to one central box that will just gather all the logs. Uh, so to sandbox, uh, I use jail. Uh, if jail is not available because uh, Audit this D and entire OpenBSM package is uh, available for Linux and uh, Mac OS X, so if jail is not available, we will change root to some directory that uh, the process cannot write. Uh, but jail is better because 
on FreeBSD, if we jail, we can now uh, create uh, IP-less jail. So the sandbox process will not have access to, to the network, for example, or other re resources. Uh, of course, we drop privileges. Mm. Uh, and then we use Capsicum. Actually, Capsicum would be enough uh, to sandbox uh, the entire process, but Capsicum also may not be available. So if we can combine all those methods, but if we cannot, we just require some of them to exist. Uh, okay, uh, and once we done all the sandboxing, we just assert that really everything is as we intended them to be. Uh, okay, so let's say we have sender and receiver. Uh, Sender is sending uh, happily all the mm, all the mm, edit, uh, records to the receiver, and let's say suddenly out of nowhere someone breaks in. So from that point in time, we cannot trust the logs anymore because the, that can be uh, they can be uh, erased, they can be changed, modified, whatever. So. Uh, uh, of course, can continue sending all the logs, uh, but what we really want to avoid is that the sender, which is compromised now, could go back and change the records on the receiver. So we really try hard uh, that such thing won't be allowed. Uh, so what Audit this D actually uh, provides and guarantees is that uh, you can find a place in your logs uh, you can trust. So for example, for, uh, to this point, uh, we know that the logs were not manipulated, uh, were not modified, and uh, we try that we try to make it hard from, uh, to jump from the sender to the receiver uh, and get access to uh, to older trial files. Configuration is pretty simple. Uh, on the sender side, uh, we just need to point it at the receiver. Uh, we can so uh, provide a fingerprint for the certificate the uh, receiver will use. And we have some password which will, which will be used for authentication. On the receiver side, uh, we can configure many senders uh, and just provide their IP address and password, uh, which also be used to authenticate uh, both sides. OK, that would be all from the perspective. Do you have any questions now? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> so the question is, uh, if it is possible for the DSD to, uh, to act as a sender and receiver, uh, yes, that's possible. So you can send the logs in both directions uh, on the same time. Yes? Uh, the question was, if, uh, sorry, I have to repeat the questions so they they are recorded. So uh, the question was if uh, I sandbox uh, both receiver and the sender or only one of them. Both are sandboxed uh, and both uh, also TLS client and TLS, uh, TLS server are separately sandboxed. So yes, yes. Colleen? So the question is if we could uh, select some system calls which we uh, consider very important and just block until they reach the disk and then actually uh, do the system call. Uh, currently in audit there is no such possibility. Uh, yes. Yes, although uh, the question was if we can select system calls, for example, we are, we are very important, uh, for us are very important, for example, uh, all the executions. So when the exec V is executed, we won't run the system call until uh, the log will reach the disk. It's not possible uh, now, so. Uh, 
uh, well, we have mechanism to actually stall the process uh, because we commit uh, the queue when it's full and uh, the process have to wait uh, until it's done. So we could do that, but we have to provide a way to configure this properly. Uh, but uh, from my practice, it's really hard to actually tell which events are important. Uh, because, uh, well, quite easy to say which are not important, but which are most important, it's pretty, uh, uh, pretty hard to tell. Uh, even for executions, if you compile, like uh, build world, uh, you do build world, it will generate huge amount of exec uh, uh, system calls. So uh, you don't want to wait for each of them to be synced to the disk. Well, but, but then it's not only about system call, but also about some other environment. Uh, yeah, so it probably, well, it will be possible, just it's not done, so. Okay, in the meantime, I will show you uh, sorry I'm not sure um, Are you familiar with this? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so I have two machines. Uh, one is the sender uh, and one is receiver. Those two X terms at the top represent one of them. Uh, and what I will try to do uh, my audit here is configured uh, to log uh, to log only executions and authentications. Uh, so uh, a small exercise to show you low latency. If you could tell me uh, which is uh, which machine is the sender and which one is receiver when I log in, and for example execute something. Uh, I hope you don't see the difference. Uh, so basically, we try to re uh, we use uh, I use KQ in Audit DSD to actually detect all the changes in the Audit file. Uh, so uh, we can uh, we can really use very small uh, delay to to distribute the logs. Of course, uh, the problem here is that if we generate much more logs than actually our uh, network connection can handle. Well, we will eventually uh, fall back, uh, and then we. And of course, uh, the question might be uh, if we should uh, stop the system until we catch up, uh, but we actually really don't want to do this. Uh, we don't know uh, because it's network connection. We don't know for how long the uh, the other machine went away, when it will uh, get back. If it get back at all, so uh, don't really do that. Uh, the machine get back, we will resend all the all the trial file, all the trial records in bigger chunks, uh, because now uh, we send uh, as soon as they come in. So, uh, and if we lag a bit uh, to the sender, uh, we will pack them into bigger blocks and we will send them to the receiver. And another interesting thing is that uh, Audit DSD doesn't really uh, parse the audit records. Uh, you can send any file probably using uh, Audit DSD. Uh, the idea here was to actually increase security. We don't parse all the audit records and uh, eventually uh, some mistakes in the parsing. It doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, 
what does matter is that uh, when we uh, uh, when we authenticate the system, mm, uh, this was the sender, the the top one was the sender. So. Uh, when we authenticate the system, uh, we will all the logs uh, that are configured for this uh, machine. Uh, its own directory. So uh, we also can be sure that uh, the logs are from this particular machine and not from some other machine. Uh, because the initial idea was to put some kind of host ID to extend audit records that come in, and to extend them to put some kind of host ID the machine that uh, was sending logs. But actually, it would be much expensive and also would force us to, to parse the audit trial logs. Okay, I think I can turn on the light. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Yes, but still not impossible. By default, the trial files are really small. Sorry, uh, to repeat the question, if we could uh, use some kind of progressing signing scheme, is that correct? Uh, so every next uh, record uh, depends somehow on the previous one. Uh, but the problem is that audit records, uh, audit trial files uh, tend to not be, uh, well, there is huge amount of uh, events, so they can be very large, but uh, they not necessarily have to be. Uh, and actually, we don't have. To, well, with Audit DSD, we can compare both machines, and we can see if the logs are gone, or basically just ignore the logs on the uh, on the uh, sender machine, and always use the logs on the remote machine. Yes, although you have different schedules for. Uh, uh, for uh, deleting them, because uh, Audit DSD deletes uh, its hard link once the distribution is done, and uh, Audit D uh, can uh, delete the files. I don't know when the space is uh, almost full or something like that. Any other questions? Yes. Sorry. The question is how mature the code is. Uh, it's not in the tree yet, uh, but it's integrated in OpenBSM package, and I will probably want to merge it to head really, uh, really soon now. Uh, then I will probably uh, deploy it on my company's machines. Uh, Yeah, I count on it actually. Yes, so uh, I will definitely send you an email. And actually, there are quite a few people that are asking for this functionality, and uh, they're also waiting for the patches. So uh, the code is complete, uh, it is tested, so it shouldn't be long before, it's, uh, before, before it hits the tree. So the question is if uh, if the uh, the sandboxing of the test how that I did is uh, very audit this D specific or it's more general. It's very specific to the audit this D. Open SSL is uh, complex, uh, e and uh, although uh, I'm starting a project on work will be will be working on Capsicum, so I will eventually look at uh, trying to protect. Open as a cell with cap I mean some more general way. Well, basically, at some developer summit, we started to uh, name all the tools that uh, would, we would like uh, sandbox because they there are some potential threat, and the list was very very long. So, 
OpenSSL is, uh, of course, OpenSSL is a very good candidate from various reasons. It's complex, it has, yeah, exactly. So its security history is not great. So, uh, so I will look into it probably, but. Uh, Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.